Deuteronomy 32, for I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect and all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. But they have dealt corruptly with him. They are no longer his children because they are blemished. They are a crooked and twisted generation. This is the way we deal with our God. You know, God is, his work is perfect. His work is full of justice. This is what the world wants now, justice. For the poor, for the marginalized, for the minority, for the angry generation, and on and on. Upright, he's not only just, he's upright. You can do justice all day long, but you upright? That's the key, you can't just fight for justice, but you gotta fight for uprightness, righteousness. What is right? You know, that's a dangerous way to define things. What is right? Because you can define it any way you want to achieve your goal. You see, do you thus repay the Lord? You foolish and senseless people. Is it not your father who created you, who made you and established you? You see, that's the way we forgot our father. We forgot our creator. We go out and do our own things. We want to fight for justice. And we call it our ways. We forget about righteousness, what is right. We love compassion, but we don't love His holiness. Because it's twisted, it's convoluted. It's twisted to our what we want. This self-actuation, postmodernism age, when everything is, is individualistically defined and decided. What I call good is good. If it is good to you, do it, honey. Nike said, just do it. Okay, whatever is in your heart, honey, just do it. it it's, it's a worldview that is very anti-Christ. It's very, very anti-Christ. People don't know that. It's a, it's a false teachings from enlightenment. I read enough of enlightenment. I know exactly how they think. They, they, they cannot square away the supernatural. They want to remove all the supernatural of God. So sad. You might as well know of God. You, they basically, they want to replace God with rationale, with reason, human reasoning, with whatever that's good for you. He said, do you thus repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people? We, we could become foolish and senseless because we are so bent on doing our own things. We forgot. Why are we so foolish? Because, because we forgot that God is our Father who created us. You know, we... You've forgotten your creator. You go ahead and do abortions. You redefine gender and sexuality. Do whatever you want because you call it, you, you make it, you're calling shots. You're making shots. You, you, you put yourself in the pattern of God. You can define sex in any way you want now. You know, you forgot your creator. Is he not your father? He's not only your creator, he's your father. He, doesn't, he didn't just create us, but he also loves us as a father. He takes care of us. He nourishes us. He protects us. That's, that's, the, that's God. God is not only the creator. God is also the father. That's the beauty of it. He's relational. He's no remote and abstract and far away God. You see, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you. Your elders, they will tell you. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. But the Lord's portion is in his, peop is his people. Jacob, his allotted heritage. You see, God divided the land and and set up borders for different nationalities, ethnic groups, etc. But God's inheritance is Jacob, which is Israel. In the Old Testament time, is Israel. Now it's a church. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God's elect, is God's inheritance. You know, we, <laughs> in a weird way, I expounded this before. We are God's inheritance, believe it or not. That means we are His people. He inherits us from nobody, from himself. He created us, but he wants us back. He, lo he lost us, many of us. He lost me before, but now I come back to him. You know, 
that millions, billions of people are back to him, but many, many more billions and tens of billions of people are lost. That are like the lost sheep of Israel, the lost tribe of Israel. It's no more the tribe of Israel. They are lost tribe of humanity. God is bringing back humanity to himself. If you listen to this message, hearken to his voice. The Father is calling you back. The Creator is calling you back. Don't be foolish and go on your own way. Look at him, you know. The Lord's portion is his people. His portion is inheritance. He found him in the desert land, in the howling waste of the wilderness. He encircled him and cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eyes. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest and flutters of its young, spreading its wings, catching them, bury them with pinions. The Lord, the Lord did all this like an eagle. He says, this is such beautiful poetic language. God is describing his, our condition and his heartbeat, his passion for how much he loves us. He found us like an abandoned child. Look at this. Like in the desert land, the howling west of the wilderness, the animals are howling at night and the heat is scorching in the day. Nighttime is freezing. You know, we are wasting away in the desert, in the wilderness. And God circled around us and He cared for us. He, God kept that abandoned child in the desert as apple of God's eyes. He's like an eagle, God stirred up its nest and flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them, burying them in its pinions. God is like an eagle, fluttering His wings over its young. So we are His young. He's protecting us. He's providing us food and caring for us. Nourishing us. Picked us up from the middle of the, the wasteland. And picked us up to bring us back to himself. And treated us as the apple of his eyes. And that is God's main relationship. You get that now? How could anyone run away from his father? From his creator? Come back. Come back. The Lord alone guided him. No offering God was with him. He made him ride on the high places of the land. He ate the produce of the land. And he suckled him with honey out of the rock. Oil from the flinty rock. Curds from the herd and milk from the rock with fat of lambs. Rams of Bashan and goats and the very finest of the wheat. And you drink foaming wine from the blood of the grapes. My goodness, all this. The Lord showered his abundance unto us. Amen.